So today's lesson is going to be in two parts. We're going to start with linear permutations with repetitions, and then we'll move into a little bit of uh, mixed review to give you a little more practice. So we want to know how many ways we can arrange the letters in the word cat. And we can do this kind of in an intuitive way. We have three letters to place in three different spots. And in this case, we could have three choices for our first spot, two choices for our second, one choice for our third, or a total of six different ways, and I've listed them all over here. Again, you can calculate that going P33. You'll get the same thing. Now we want to know how many ways can the letters in B be arranged? And you would think it's the same problem as cat because we've got three letters and three letters here. However, the Bs repeat themselves, and we call these indistinguishable. So you can't tell the difference between one E and another E. And if that's the case, I've listed all the different possibilities here, and we only have three different arrangements. So what we've got is we've got a new type of equation where the number of different permutations of n objects where n, one, n sub 1 are indistinguishable objects, n sub 2 could be indistinguishable, and so on and so forth. The total number of permutations is n factorial. We take the total numbers, factorial it, and then divide that by each permut or each number of items that's indistinguishable, and it's factorial. So in this case, I had 3 factorial, and E repeated itself twice, so I'm going to divide that by 2 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Produce out, get a total of 3 different arrangements, which is what we had. Let's do some more practice. Number of ways to arrange the letters in the word eerie. We've got a total of five items. So that's going to be five factorial. E is the only thing repeated, and it's repeated three times. So that's just five factorial over three factorial. You can work this out without a calculator. It's five factorial over three factorial. Those reduce out, we get a total of 20 different ways. So you got 25 Christmas lights, 10 are blue, 5 red, 4 green, and 6 yellow. How many different arrangements of those 25 lights can you have? Well, we're taking all 25 and arranging those. We've got a whole slew of repeats 10 blues, 5 reds. Four greens, six yellows. And this can all be done on a calculator. And the answer in this case is rather, rather large. We get about uh, 2.06 times 10 to the 12th power. And next we're going to arrange the letters in Shakespeare, counting for the repetitions. And Shakespeare is a total of 11 letters. That's 11 factorial. The S repeats twice, H does not repeat, A repeats twice, K does not repeat, E repeats three times, P does not repeat, and the R does not repeat. So this will get it done. And you can grind that out on your calculator. So that was basically it for the new piece. Now we're going to do some mixed review. And in many cases, some of these are going to be a little more difficult. So in this problem, we have a banquet table where you've got two senators, two ambassadors, and three mayors. And we're going to find out how many ways they can be seated by title. So what I mean by title is that even though the two senators are different, because we're arranging them by title, 
a senator is a senator is a senator, so they're indistinguishable. So this is still a little bit of these linear permutations with repetition. So I have a total of seven seats, but my senators repeat, my ambassadors repeat, and my mayors repeat. So this would be the first part. Now the second part, we want to know how many ways they can be seated by title if the senators must sit on two ends. So this problem is a little more difficult. And we're going to have to diagram this out, actually. So if the senators are going to sit in two ends, that means I get either my senators here or I get my senators over here. In each case, though, you'll notice that because my senators are here and I can flip-flop them, and since we're talking by title, neither arrangement is different in either of these cases, it really leaves me with only five ways to place the other people. So what I've got in both cases is I've got five factorial, and then I'm seating ambassadors and mayors. So I have repeats there of two factorial and three factorial. And that will be the same in both cases. In our next example, we're talking about white chips and red chips. And we're looking for ways to place these, except you'll notice how many ways can three chips be drawn from a total of 10 chips. We're not laying these down, so there's not necessarily an arrangement. These are grouped. So when we talk grouping, we're using combinations. And again, we're doing that because the order in which we group them doesn't really matter. So what we want to do is we want to find in our first part, if you have two chips are white and one chip is red. So we have to ensure that when we reach in and pull things out, we get two chips that are going to be white. So to ensure white chips, we take those seven and choose two. And then to get the red chips, we've got three possibilities and we're choosing one of those. These are two different events happening to get the total number of ways that can happen and we multiply those two together. And that would be our solution for the first part. In our second part, we want to get three chips that are all white. So to ensure that they're all white, we take from only the white and choose three of them. There's no red, so I don't have to worry about picking any of those. Lastly, with three, they're all red, and we're going to ensure that I get a red. So I'm only pulling from three, and I'm taking all three of them. And that would be the way I'd group that problem out. Next problem, you've got 200 students attending a dance. Um, you've got a ticket with a number for a door prize. Three different numbers are selected. You want to know how many ways to award the three different prizes. This is a permutation because you're picking them in order. It's not necessarily a group. So this is from 200 items. We're arranging three. And I could just pop that into a calculator. Remember, this is NPR in this case. In our next problem, we have 12 workers in a cafeteria, and they rotate among three different jobs. We want to know how many ways the crew can be assigned to the jobs of two cooks, seven servers, and three dishwashers. 
Well, this problem, we start with our 12 workers and we're choosing two for cooks. So this would be 12C2. And what's different about this problem is the order in which you pick them for the cooks doesn't matter. But the fact that you pick them matters because when we go to choose the servers, we don't have 12 people to choose from anymore. We have only 10 people to choose from. So we start with our 10 people and we're going to choose seven from them. And it doesn't make any difference what order we pick them in, just as long as we pick them in a group. And once again, we no longer have 10 people to choose from for our dishwashers. We only have three people left, and we're going to choose all three of those to be in a group. So after we've found these different values, we multiply all three together and get our total. And again, you can do that on your calculator. This last problem was a little bit more difficult. The rest were little variations of what we've already done. Fill out your lesson summary, do your mind math lab, and we'll get back to you tomorrow.